This is the structure that we're building. It is a small timber frame shed. It's only six feet across and eight feet deep. The pieces that we're going to be working on right now are these sills right here. Um, so I've laid out uh, the basic dimensions here in a SketchUp document. I find that building my plans out of a SketchUp like a 3D model uh, really helps me uh, visualize what needs to be done. So let's go in here and look at this particular joint. And this is the joint that we're going to be cutting. This goes all the way through the, the timber. So our dimensions are to come in 2 inches and 6 inches. And then from the top we come down an inch and a half and then 3 inches. So one thing that is worth noting is that when you're laying out your joints, you want to pick a reference face and stick with that reference face. For example, we didn't measure from here down to here an inch and a half and then from the bottom up because the timbers have some variance due to the way they're sawn. So we want to pick one reference face and use that all the way through. Some people have a tool called a chain mortiser to cut this, which would be really sweet. Um, clamps on the beam and it'll cut straight through here in, in just a couple of passes. I don't have that luxury, so I will show you the way that I cut these mortises. Um, we're going to start by defining the edges using our skill saw. Once we have our drop cuts defined with the skill saw, we switch to our mortising chisel, our timber framing chisel, and we're going to drop this right on the line and set our edges with one good smack. In lieu of a chain mortiser, we have a Forstner bit here. And I've selected one that's just a little bit smaller than these uh, cheeks. And basically I'm going to hold it vertical and I'm going to just hog out a whole bunch of material from this uh, mortise. Okay, we've got the majority of this hogged out as far as we can reach with this bit. So I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Uh, now that we have the majority of the waste uh, hogged out with the drill, we're going to use our chisel and we're going to square up the corners and clean up the edges. Once we're about halfway through, we'll flip it over and approach from the other side. You have to be careful not to drive your chisel in so deep that you can't get it out. Not that I would know about that. We're getting there, getting closer. Two tools that are really helpful when we're cutting these mortises is a combination square and a framing square. So the thing you can do with a combination square is you can set it in the mortise and you can check to see if your mortise if your walls are square. So I got a little bit of work to do here still. The other, the other one that's helpful is this framing square. And we cut our, we often cut our mortises at an inch and a half because that's a common size for a chisel. And then also, this side of the framing square is an inch and a half. So you can take that and you slide it down into the mortise and it should be able to freely move back and forth. We can see I got a little bit more to clean up before this is nice. Right now this is kind of snug. A side effect, come on over here, a side effect is that you have often have pencil on the edge of your square, so these lines right here show where uh, it's a high spot. So we'll go ahead and take those off now. As we're cleaning up a mortise like this, 
you have to be really careful not to send your chisel all the way through. If you send your chisel all the way through, you run the chance of, of blowing out some wood on this side. So go down about halfway, flip the board over, and, and readjust. Our mortise is relatively square, and our framing, our framing square will slide through here uh, just like a 10 inch should. So we're going to move on and cut this three more times. We've cut our mortise already. Inch and a half down, another inch and a half, two inches in, six inches in. So our, our tenon needs to be an inch and a half, and it needs to be all the way through. So we're going to cut a six inch tenon, and then we also have to cut off a section of the tenon uh, to fit into this spot. So let's look at that here. So our measurements on this guy are going to be inch and a half down and three inches down. And then from the outside, we're going to come in two inches. Let's go cut those. There's our six inches. And we'll use this outside as our reference. And then we need to come in two inches. So we'll put that here and here. And then we'll connect these lines. And we'll come down our inch and a half to there. And then at our three inch mark, we'll take it the rest of the way down. There we go. It's often helpful when we're cutting these uh, tenons that have some waste spots to put some X's in, in the material that we want to get rid of. So we'll just mark this as waste here. And then up on top, we have waste. Actually, this entire piece here is going to be waste on the top. So I'm going to take this, this side measurement and I'm going to transfer this over to the other side and then we'll start cutting. Checking my depth to make sure I'm not going to exceed that line. Okay. Let's take a look. So this whole section here is this whole top section is going to be waste. This is the part that we're going to keep. So even though it looks like I'm stopping here, I can cut all the way across. So let's check our depth before we cut too deep. Yep, see we're too deep. So let's raise that up. done, we need to come across this cut right here. And now we're even shallower, we don't want to go down into this tenon. So let's set our depth again. That's looking good. We'll bring this cut all the way across now. So this is the side that we need to save. Now we got to make cuts that come from here all the way across and here all the way across. We've got our primary lines defined. This is our tenon that we want to keep. And basically everything around here has to go away. When we cut our mortises, we used the inch and a half of this framing square and we slid it through here to make sure that it was the right size or that it fit properly. So our tenons need to be basically this same size. Um, there's a variety of ways to check or to get these um, sized properly. Uh, a really nice way of doing it here is to build a template. So this is just some uh, two by material. 
with an inch and a half spacer on each side and then it's just screwed together. So now we have, this is our, um, this is our reference piece. So we got, it, we got this rough cut and this needs to be able to slide all the way down um, to the shoulder. What generally happens is it'll fit on here at the beginning and then the tendon gets fatter as it gets back this way. So we can either pare it down with a chisel or we can use a plane. I'm going to use a plane this time and just try and get it smooth enough so that this template will slide all the way on. All four tenons are now cut and a couple of things that I find interesting about tenons is first of all they don't need to be perfect because they are going inside this housing and you're never going to see them again. As long as they fit in there relatively square um, and true you don't have to worry about gouges or things like that on them. Uh, once the template slides on and that fits nicely one of the things I like to try to do is to add uh, a chamfer on these corners and a little bit of a bevel on the front. It helps it slide into the mortise easier and uh, makes things just go a whole lot better when it's time to assemble the joints. Some timber framers don't put anything together until the whole frame is cut, but I am way too impatient for that. So I'm going to move these things over here onto this area behind me and I'm going to try assembling these four joints tonight. The floor sills are assembled. Uh, they're not pegged yet, but we will get to that at some point. Um, yeah, they came together very nice. Joints fit flush. Things are flush on the top. We use this as our reference face, so these things came together very smooth. Uh, next up will be cutting pockets for floor joists. So stay tuned.